Welcome, we're glad that you're here. Um, I'm talking today with Dan Morrow, and he knows what you're thinking. Another author bio telling you that you should buy his books. Well, not so much. Mm -hmm. He writes because he feels compelled to allow his creativity to live and breathe beyond the confines of his heart and mind. He writes because he needs to tell these stories, even if he is the only one who reads them. He writes because he wants to put his faith in difficult situations and watch what happens. He writes because he wants to provoke thought in others, viewing faith from a different perspective. You have hundreds of authors and thousands of books to choose from, but he is simply asking for an opportunity for you, the reader, to take a chance on him. You just might find something worthwhile. So, Absolutely. welcome Dan, glad you. you're here today. Thank you. And how about you telling us about your journey? How did you start writing? What prompted you to write to begin with? It was just the written word. Uh, from the time I learned how to read, um, I was fascinated by it and just the, the way you could string sentences together and put coherent thoughts together. And, you know, something about drawing you in to the story that made you feel included and your brain kind of gets lost in everything that's going on. And I thought, you know, what the heck, I'll give it a try. And it started with journaling. And then I just went to I'll write, write little short stories here and there. And then finally I said, you know what, maybe I could write a book. And, and I have. So... Uh, just start that way. I see that you have two books. Yes. Now give us your two titles. Your first book that you wrote is, what is the title? The first, the, book? the first book I wrote is called The Secret of Silver Keep. And that's about a pastor who's helping to cover up a murder. Okay. And two strangers come into town to convince him to tell the truth. Okay. And there's a little bit something unique about those two strangers that as you read the book, you kind of get an idea of what, that who they are. So Okay. And then what's the so, title of the second one? The second one is called A Heartbeat in Danger. And that one is uh, a lot more challenging. And it was challenging for me to write it. It's a story about a, uh, a teenage girl who is facing an unexpected pregnancy. And she's carried in a dream state forward to see what her child's life may or may not become. And she's taken into these different scenarios where, you know, on one hand, uh, you know, her daughter is maybe homeless and her daughter's a doctor or maybe a lawyer, or maybe in prison. And uh, so she's confronted with all of these differences about what her child could be, but she's still torn by that attitude of, if I have this child, it's gonna ruin my life, you know? And uh, so there's that conundrum of, you know, she wants to run and comfort the child, but at the same time, it's gonna ruin my life. Uh, the great thing about that is, and this was difficult, I don't tell you what to think. Okay. I don't push an agenda. I do not, I do not end the story on a happy note. In fact, I don't even know what, this, what the character does. Uh, that's that's where it, it ends Very on. interesting. Yeah, I, I don't even know what the character does at the end. I love that. So, so how do you come up with the topics or with what it is that you want to write about? What is your inspiration? It's, you know, they say write about what you know. And I, I kind of have a good grasp on faith and church and, and what happens there. Really what it comes from is that I would always hear people in church say that, you know, the greatest place you can be is on your knees before Christ and, and just, you know, bowing there. But then when like, a, a bad thing comes along, something happens, they're always like panicking. They're always like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. And they're just like, they're so downtrodden on it. And I'm like, okay, either your faith carries you through this or it doesn't. And I thought to myself, okay, why is that? That it is so, you know, either, it's either or. So why can't you have it the same? Why, why can't you do that? It's you know? easy to have faith when things are it going is, yes, well. It is, yes, absolutely, it is, <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little harder to have that faith it when things is. aren't going so well. Absolutely. And I think it goes back to basic psychology, you know, we all want to make sure that we've mm -hmm. got that roof over our heads and, and, and food on the table, right. and so right. uh, when those things kind of disappear for whatever reason, mm -hmm. that's when we start to... Or even if they get shaken up a little bit. Exactly, exactly. So how did you know, even with, with your background and, and having your faith and realizing all of this, how did you know that you actually wanted to write a book? You know, that's a great question. Um, I think it was just a matter of... That just seems like such a big project. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really is just one of those things I thought, you know, well, well, can I really do it? Can I really get to that goal? And I started reading about you know, what it takes to write a book and what they consider a novel length and so forth. And I thought, can I really accomplish that? And so I kind of pushed myself to, to reach that. And it was difficult. It was really hard to write Silver Keep, to be honest, um, because it was the first one. And um, it, it was just a challenge, I guess, to me to say, can you do it? And I accomplished it, and I felt great about it. 
Okay. Now, do you um, are, are you a little bit of a, a, an overachiever? Do you like to have a challenge in your life? Uh, actually, no. Um, I am. Well, see, that's even, that's yeah. even a bigger stretch then <laughs> exactly. that you actually decided to write a book. Right. Right. It's it's kind of this. It's kind of the opposite for me, where um, you know something gets difficult. I like you know, remember the Staples commercials where they had the easy button. Right. I love easy. Just hit the easy <laughs> button and you're done. Right. Um, but uh, so that's that's kind of the way I approach it. But I think with the stories, I think with writing a book, what I've what I've learned about myself is that I'm approaching it from the sense of, you know, it's it's a it's a series of moments. It's you know, okay, this moment happened. Now this moment, and then just kind of you know, add on to it. So it's a series of moments that you that you ultimately end up with a great story. Well, let's talk about your writing process. Um, I just recently published mm -hmm. as well. Yes. And congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. But it, it is a big project. It is. And, and it is a little overwhelming. And uh, I did a lot of research, uh, not only on how to write, but when to write, and mm -hmm. you know, and what other folks were doing. So, uh, how how did or do you make time in your schedule for writing? Do you have a set time of like every morning at six o'clock? I'm going to write for a half an hour. Honestly, I because there are some authors that I, do. I know, that. I know, and I'll tell you what, they're very disciplined to do that, and mm -hmm. I wish I was that way. But honestly, it's a matter of sometimes I will force myself to go to the keyboard, and I'll be like, okay, you need to write something, and I'll sit down and I'll either correct something I've done before, and I'll stop, mm -hmm. or I'll write like two lines and I'm done. Or you know, there are times, and this feels good, when you just pour out you, it just starts flowing out of you so it's really not a set time for me okay it's kind of just like you know, I'll make myself sit down and I'll see what happens you know but there's always that in that mindset of um, you know thinking about the story thinking about what to do where to go next okay so when uh, when you're in flow and it's just pouring out of you how do you how do you let the rest of the family know that you're uh, that you're in flow I, I close the door Okay, uh, so that's the signal. Yeah, okay. that, yeah exactly. That's so fortunately, it's just my wife and I now. Okay. So she knows that when I'm upstairs <laughs> and I close the door, leave him alone. He's, he's all right. That's he's in the his signal. Own. Yeah, that's exactly. the signal. I get it. Exactly. I get it. My office is in the corner of my kitchen, and so I have a a, a screen. And when the screen is up, all the grandkids <laughs> know that I'm in the middle of a project. So, yeah. So that I get that. You yeah. kind of have to have a signal that the you family do. understands. You do absolutely. Because if your flow gets disrupted. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to get back. Right. And there's, that. there's been a lot of times where, you know, I'll be sitting in bed, I'll be like, okay, and she'll be like, you know, well, you're restless. You know, what, why don't you go write? And she'll make me go. Okay. And so, yeah, so she pushes me on that too. So she's, she's a great help. Okay. I love it. Now, let's talk about your second book. Give mm -hmm. us the title again. It's A Heartbeat in Danger. A Heartbeat in Danger. And let's tell us a little more about what that book is about. Okay. Because that one you just recently published. When, when did that one launch? Uh, about two years ago, I want to okay. say. So okay. it's been recent, so okay. not too long ago. Very good. It actually came from a real life story. Um, my Our daughter's best friend, we've known her since she was in third grade, and so she's become part of our family. And we knew that she was pregnant, and her boyfriend was out of the picture, and her parents had been divorced for a long time. And I remember I was taking her to a friend's house, and she was in the car, and she just was just weeping. And she said all the cliche things, you know, my life is over, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I don't know how I'm gonna handle this, I don't know if I'm up for it. And I knew in that moment, one of two things that I could do that neither one would help, is one, I could give her all of the Bible verses I know and thump her over the head with that and jam it down her throat, or go to the clinic and get this done. And neither one of those two solutions would have helped her. What she needed me to do was be in that moment with her and feel that pain with her. So I got to thinking about it and I said, you know, thousands of other girls face the same thing. And how many people are out there pushing them? We've got two sides to this story that are screaming yes and no, yes and no all the time. And we've come to expect that, that's all we know. I think what we need to do is to shut out that noise, get some people that we know and trust, get in a room together, ask some very, very hard questions and figure it out for yourself. You don't need people shoving things down your throat. You don't need the agenda or the rhetoric just figure it out and I realized for myself I mean I'm, I'm a Christian I've been a Christian for a long time most of my life and I knew that regardless of what she decided to do I'm gonna have to love her and I'm gonna have to find a way to forgive whatever may come along and that was a challenge for me and I think it's the same way with all church people Christians that they claim Christ that 
if they decide something that you don't agree with, are you still going to be in their corner? Are you still going to support them? Are you still going to be there for them? You know, or are you just going to run away? Because you have to. And if you really love somebody, you're going to be there no matter what. Wow, this is some some uh, important message there, and some, it is. some and a tough subject. It is. So you decided then that you wanted to turn that real life mm -hmm. into a story that right. you could publish. Uh, what in hopes of helping other gals that might be going through that or I, other other families that might be going through that I think it was both I think it was just a challenge all the way around for myself first uh, because again there's things about the book that are uncomfortable for me to read and there was one section of the book in particular that I struggled with should I keep this in should I change it should I kind of tweak it a little bit here and there and I, and I did my best but I left it in because I think it's important so, okay did, did you think that um, maybe some folks that you were connected with might read the book and judge you somehow? <laughs> I think so, I, I think so, but I'll give you two examples. Uh, there was one gentleman who volunteered to read the, or, or review the book for me, so mm -hmm. I sent him a copy, and he messaged me and says, you know, hey, I'm about 40 pages in, is this an anti-abortion book? And I said, hold on. I said, you're not even to the good stuff yet. You're not even to the good parts. And I said, give it a little more time. I said, I don't even know what happens in this book. I don't know, what, I don't know how it turns out. Give it a little more time, so he did. He ends up coming back to me and says, no, I'm not going to do it. He was so entrenched in that mindset against, you know, uh -huh. he, you know, he was so anti, you know, he, he was so for it that he couldn't see beyond what his, his rhetoric was. So I made him angry. I'm like, okay, I did my job. And then another person who was uh, going to church, he, he bought a book. And I texted him a little bit later. I said, you know, hey, uh, what'd you think of the book? And he calls me up. He says, well, you know, I don't think that you should have had that one part in the book. And it's kind of at the beginning and it, and it sets up the rest of the book. It sets the tone mm -hmm. for the rest of the book. And so it's very, very important. So I unsettled him in his mindset. So I figured I've got both ends of the spectrum, yes and no. And I've upset both of those sides. And so I'm you're like, doing I your job. Yeah, I accomplished my goal, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because you want the book to make people think Absolutely. about their belief system and Absolutely. why they believe what they believe Absolutely. and how it affects everyone that is connected to Absolutely. the story. Absolutely, it's it's a challenge to. It's it's a challenge no matter how you look at it. It, uh, it it forces you to view this subject from a different perspective. Like I said, she goes through, she's going through this dream state, and uh, she's carried there by somebody called the being. And again, if you read that, you know who the mm -hmm. being is. And he's asking all of these hard questions, asking these questions of her, forcing her to think about. Well, do I really want to follow through with this? Do I really want to have the child? Do I not? You know, and she's going back and forth in this whole time, and there's a lot of give and take in that, and it, uh, it it was very hard to write in some places. It really got me. Now, how often did you go back and change what you had written? <laughs> oh my gosh, a lot. I think a lot because. Uh, I would go back and I'd read something and I'd be like, no, that doesn't quite capture what I want. Or maybe I should take the edge off of it just a little bit, you know, um, because I could have been more brutal. It's hard to know. It is. Yeah. To find that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It, it's, it's very hard. But um, uh, I could have been way more brutal. But I, I just said, you know what, let's let's kind of tone it out a little bit in places and uh, let's let's leave it alone. So. OK. Yeah. OK. So if you had to pick an audience, who is your book? that particular book who is it primarily for I want to say anybody who is so entrenched and ingrained in their mindset of pro or con I would say anybody who so is, your two beta readers were perfect <laughs> right exactly exactly yes they were I think it's I think it's for anybody who is so ingrained in the rhetoric and, so, and just you know spews that agenda that no you need to take a step back from your position and think is this really right Am I wrong in some places or not? Because, you know, again, it's about it's about love. I mean, I had to, had our chosen daughter, you know, decided not to have her child, I would still have to find a way to love her and forgive her. And like I said, be in her corner. I've known her too long to give up. So I would have had to, you know, reconcile with that. Fortunately, she's got three beautiful kids now, but uh, uh, but I would have to, I would have had to square with that. If you could tell us what your overarching message of the book is, is is that what it is? Is to just it's you know there's a, there's several messages you can get out of it. I mean okay. the overarching message is really challenging you to really think why do you believe what you believe. Um, but the other side of it is if you dig deeper, it's about motherhood. And if you're reading it carefully, 
you can you can notice, like I said, there's a conundrum where the main character, her name's Stacy, uh, Stacy is torn with, I'm seeing my child, you know, in in distress. I need to comfort her, and she wants to run to her like a mom does. And then there's times where she's, you know, in you know, like she's a lawyer and she, you know, she's winning the Senate seat and so on. I want to run and celebrate with her, you know, just like a mom mm -hmm. does. So there's that pull both ways. But then she's reeling back and okay, no, there's this. But what about this, you know? Mm -hmm. But also affecting the, the the book is I didn't even mention this. Stacy's mother, they have an estranged relationship, and over the course of the book, both of these characters change. And again, you you feel that motherhood uh, pull where the most important thing is love, caring, concern, being there for each other. So you, you kind of get an element of that as well. So it's kind of hidden beneath all okay. the other stuff. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> Thank wow. You. I've Thank been you. following you for some time on Facebook Thank and I, I've been watching what you're doing and I'm so excited to be here today. Thank you. What plans do you have for the future? Another book soon, maybe? I have, oh my gosh, I have so many different uh, books in uh, different stages of uh, development. Some of them I've completed, some of them almost, okay. some of them not even really there. Um, but I've got I've got so many ideas. So okay. it's unbelievable. Well, how can the audience today and the listeners that are listening into to this uh, recording later, how can they connect with you even more? They, you can find me on uh, Facebook. I've got my you know, business cards here for you uh, that are here, for those of you here. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Author Dan Morrow. You can find me LinkedIn, Daniel Morrow. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Author Dan Morrow. And you can find you on Amazon. Yes, your books on are Amazon. Right there. I am, my book is on yes. Amazon. It's on uh, um, yeah, Barnes & Noble as well. Very good. Uh, and uh, Books a Million and iTunes. Very nice. So, Dan, thank you so much. Well, this thank has you. been such a joy talking with you today, and I can't wait to read Well, books. thank you. I appreciate it. Great. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. All right.